Okay. So the first thing that you have to know whenever you are trying to know something about core with CMS organizations. Uh -huh. Okay. Based on these organizations, whenever you create any kind of uh, compensation eligibility rules, you will be defining that rule whether this compensation package or this compensation plan or grade have to be restricted to only this organization or people from this organization. So we have to know what is this organization and um, you know how uh, it is actually create uh, how it is actually viewed in workday all this since you're actually end user of um, workday i think you know you should be able to uh, know uh, since you'll be part of organization hierarchy you should uh -huh. you'll be able to understand this so now uh, uh, to know something about organization we have a first uh, uh, term called supervisory organization okay i know you'll be a member of uh, this supervisor organization in your current workday system reporting to your manager and your manager will be managing the supervisor organization where you are a member of that supervisor organization okay supervisor organization is nothing but which groups which groups members into hierarchy which groups mm -hmm. all the employees into hierarchy and enable employees to be part of organization hierarchy so if you see workday system So I'll show you one example of um, supervisor organization. You are seeing one of the organization called Workday HR Information System, where Melissa Hartman is a manager of uh, the supervisor organization, and which you are seeing Anthony Robert and uh, Josh Andrew are members of this organization. Okay, it's getting refreshed. Okay, you are seeing Anthony Robert and Josh Andrew are members of the supervisor organization, and Melissa, who is actually uh, managing the supervisor organization so one thing that you need to remember here is since Ma Melissa is actually managing the supervisor organization Melissa will not be member of this supervisor organization Melissa is just a kind of manager for the supervisor organization where people who will be reporting to her will be members of the supervisor organization okay so um, you can relate it to your um, org structure in you which you are part of it so you will be reporting to one of the manager and you will be member of the organization where your manager is managing that organization so one important thing that you need to remember is managers managers will never be the member of the organization that they are managing okay manager will be member of the organization where they are reporting to so now you are reporting to your manager you are member of the manager that she is or uh, you know your manager is organizing and your manager will be member of the organization uh, to whom um, uh, they are reporting actually so wherever you know your manager is reporting to their manager they'll be your manager will be a member of that particular organization so top level organization mm -hmm. your manager's manager will be there right so they'll be managing one organization and your manager will be part of that organization so okay. the, the yeah. thing that you need yeah. to remember is yeah yeah uh, i was going to say a follow up question on that but i have seen in the orgs what happens mm -hmm. some of the uh, melissa had three members for example just making it up right yeah and say the third person um, let's mm -hmm. say mudit right and mm -hmm. mudit mm -hmm. left the company right okay then what mm -hmm. i have seen in place of mudit she will put for the time being melissa only she can do that okay so right? the, the that scenario is um, let's say mudit uh, is a kind of manager okay if mudit is a manager and there are you know certain team members reporting to mudit okay and when mudit uh, uh, terminates from the organization there are certain team members okay who are actually reporting to mudit so now in order to replace that um, the mudit's position and mm -hmm. for time being in order to have those team members to report to who are actually reporting to mudit so what um, the so what configurator will be doing for time being melissa will be a kind of uh, you know member 
who uh, melissa will be the uh, manager of that organization where mudit was managing and all the team members who are actually reporting to mudit will be reporting to melissa for time being and okay. after some particular point of time if someone um, you know getting hired in the place of mudit she will again you know go to the top level hierarchy and that person you know will be replaced in your position and all the team members who were actually reporting to you and melissa after your termination they will again report to that person and that person will be reporting to melissa mm -hmm. okay yeah that's how you know um, organization structure will be built actually so if you are actually manager for every manager will be creating a supervisor organization not uh, like like here you are seeing andrew so andrew is a kind of individual contributor there are no team members reporting to this person and similarly josh andrew there are no team members reporting to this person but still there are members of this organization uh, who are actually reporting to melissa now if you okay. see here there is a workday security team so which is actually another organization under melissa okay mm -hmm. so now if i go to this security there are no members but you know melissa will be managing one more organization called workday security if there are any people who are working in workday security they will be reporting to melissa so like that a member can be managing any kind of um, any number of supervisor organization which will be getting inherited so inherited is nothing but whatever you know supervisory organization the top level organization will be holding like um, uh, have you heard anything called staffing model yeah one is position yeah. based another yes. is work based yes right? yeah. yeah so yeah these staffing models will get inherited from superior organization okay mm -hmm. so when melissa wanted to have one more team that she wanted to manage a uh, named workday security there will be one more organization uh, created uh, where she will be managing that and the people who are working on security team will be reporting to her so when she creates a uh, workday reporting under workday hris uh, the supervisor organization uh, workday security uh, supervisor organization will be a kind of subordinate organization when subordinate organization is created under any superior organization all the things there are certain things like you know will get inherited like staffing mm -hmm. model will get inherited location will get inherited and org assignments org assignments are nothing but a company a company and a cost center will be getting inherited uh, to give uh, you know brief about company and cost center cost center is nothing but you know which is used to track uh, expenses and revenues that are happening in the supervisor organization let's say you have you are managing you know one of the supervisor organization and you have a three to four members reporting to you and uh, let's say workday compensation is uh, your organization name okay so now you have all compensation analysts reporting to you so now if uh, there is any kind of bonus that you are paying to these three members if there is any kind of annual salary review process as part of annual review process their compensation is getting increased and if there is any kind of spot bonus that you are actually actually uh, releasing to these uh, team members who are reporting to you all these finance related things all these um, you know uh, anything related to expenses budgets will be tracked through cost center okay so cost center is nothing but which is used to track revenues expenses and uh, any kind of you know financial related things all these things can be tracked through cost center what is the expense that they got uh, during this period uh, what is the revision uh, compensation revision they got during this period all these things you know you will be tracked through cost center so cost center is generally used by finance team to track all the expenses and revenues and all so you will be assigning that cost center to the supervisor organization so that whatever expenses that this organization is undergoing whatever expenses that this organization is making so all those things you know will be tracked through this cost center mm -hmm. okay and similarly uh, company company is nothing but let's say you're working in us okay and now we are company is extending um, its locations uh, to another countries like india um, australia canada and all so uh, you'll not um, have uh, uh, any other organization built in india under the same company in us there has to be a separate company in india also like uh -huh. let's say example um, uh, google is there okay google is uh, located in us now google has its operations in india and all other countries now there has to be a different company has to be created for india like google india google australia so there is a different company has to be created on all the employees of india has to be under that company any organization that are getting created in india has to be under that company 
okay so uh, whenever you're creating a supervisor organization a company has to be mandatory um, it's not a required field but um, it says that uh, this organization is under this company this organization uh, has uh, employees who are under this company a kind of you know uh, underlying meaning it will give so if you're not giving any company it automatically takes uh, inheritance actually so from superior organization whatever company is there whatever cost center is there it automatically gets inherited to subordinate organization let's say if we go to so melissa's organization now so melissa has a company called workday usa and workday hris is a cost center now if you go to any of the subordinate organization who are actually under melissa's supervisor organization if you go take any of the organization let's say take reporting supervisor organization now go to org assignments you will see this uh, company and cost center has got inherited from melissa's organization Okay, whatever company and cost center are defined at the superior organization at top level organization will be getting inherited to all downstream subordinate organization and um, if you don't want it to have that kind of uh, inheritance to be applied to the subordinate organization that you are creating you just need to edit that supervisor organization and give your company and cost center that you wanted to have um, let's say example um, now we we'll take um, Google as an example. Okay, so Google is currently in, in US and um, now it is extending its um, um, location to India country. Now once it has um, extended to India country, there will be a separate company created for India, separate cost center created for India for Google. Okay, so now um, um, I will be the kind of you know manager who will be joining Google India. So now the separate supervisory organization has to be created for me. Um, reporting to the, my manager will be in us okay, let's say you are my manager okay you are actually part of us company okay now uh, you are building your team in india now uh, i'm the i'm one of the person you know, who is joining um, in india company uh, reporting to you and i'll be member of your supervisor organization but uh, my company and my cost center will be different okay because i'm not part of uh, yes if i'm actually my salary my bonus whatever you know um, i'm getting paid are tracked through india company and india cost center okay that is the reason why there is a different um, company that has been created in india and different cost center that has been created in india where i'll be member of that um, uh, india company and india cost center but i'll be reporting to you i'll be reporting to you and um, uh, whatever you know the hierarchy that i'll be having i'll be under your supervisor organization but my company and my cost center will be different the reason is because i am in a different country okay mm -hmm. each different yeah. country should have a different legal entity okay so okay. that's a kind of compliance issue if you are not following any kind of legal entity policy and all so hr compliance issue will be there each different country we should have a separate legal entity and separate cost center all the finance related things that are happening for that particular country should undergo with a separate legal entity and a different cost center which is used to track revenues and expenses that are happening to that so that's how we know um, organization hierarchies will be built and uh, different companies and cost center will be assigned to that if you mm -hmm. if you're not giving any company and any uh, cost center uh, automatically by default that will be getting inherited from your uh, superior organization to your subordinate organization that's how we know okay. organization hierarchy actually follows so okay. now uh, you need to assign, um, sorry in order to assign uh, we just click those three dots next to yes. the name you can edit yeah if you wanted to assign any kind of um, if you wanted to break the inheritance policy if you don't want it to have that to be inherited to your company that you are creating in india uh, that uh, organization that you are creating in india or any other country you need to edit the supervisory organization you need to change the company and cost center here got it and how to create a new cost center supposedly sub it's not on the list Yes, it's uh, you know everything is uh, the task related. Whatever you know, okay. you wanted to create anything, create cost center is a task. Okay. So you'll be seeing the cost center uh, task, and you'll be seeing cost center hierarchy, and similarly company also. Okay. You'll be creating company. 
Mm. You'll be creating company and company hierarchy with this task. And once you have this ready and you have, let's say, brand, you're actually getting into workday um, newly and you wanted to build complete hierarchy. Okay, you wanted to build complete org hierarchy system. Now what you'll do, you'll, you need to first have a company hierarchy and company ready. And once you have company, company hierarchy cost center ready, you'll be creating a supervisory organization. You'll be creating a supervisory organization and you'll be assigning uh, your company and your cost center to this organization. So for any organization that you're creating, be it supervisor organization, be it cost center, be it company, all these are organization types, okay? So if you're creating any of the organization, there is a prerequisite for you to create or to select reorganization event. So whatever you're seeing here, this is actually a prerequisite and it is actually required for you to have your reorganization event selected for any of the organization that you're creating. So the purpose of this reorganization is to track any of the changes that are happening to the organization, to track any of the additions or removals or any kind of updates happening to the organization this reorganization event will be tracking those changes and whenever you wanted to view the changes uh, view all the changes that are happened through this reorganization event through reporting you should be able to know that let's say now i've created one organization uh, last year now uh, i wanted to change the name of the organization or i wanted to you know change the company of the organization and uh, uh, change the cost center of the organization so you will be editing that and you will be making that and tomorrow i will be again making the changes and after i'll be again making changes a lot of changes are happening um, in the organization but uh, you know if you wanted to track what are all the changes that are happened to this organization can be tracked through reorganization event so you will be just you know whenever you are reporting you will just give uh, your reorganization event then you will get to know under this reorganization event what are all the changes happened to your organization you will be able to know that one so the purpose of this reorganization event is uh, it's a bucket or a container which is which is helpful for you to track the changes or updates or additions or removals happened for the supervisor organization so uh, will be so whenever you are creating a supervisor organization in your organization there will be already one reorganization event that is created and you need to choose that reorganization event whenever you are creating a supervisor organization so probably the, any of uh, hr team who is actually creating supervisor organization they would have already created one reorganization event and whenever they are creating a new supervisor organization they will be selecting that reorganization event and will be creating any of the organization that they wanted to so okay, now um, uh, yeah question. Uh, i would say uh, if i have to make a tweak to a uh, organization right i can also mm -hmm. do i have to use the reorganization event i can just edit directly yes if you wanted to edit any of the supervisor organization system will ask you to you know select the reorganization event and okay. uh, make the changes actually because the change has to be tracked right so in order to uh, track the changes that are happening to the organization you need to actually give that reorganization event under which you wanted to track these changes okay. basically one unique reorganization event will be maintained uh, in the organization your uh, let's say your uh, uh, workday team your workday hr team you know will be maintaining one unique reorganization event for all the organization that they are creating for all the organization they are actually updating all these things you know will be done through one unique um, reorganization event that they will be maintaining okay and what is the report name through which you can see uh, the audit um, so we actually create a report actually we will be creating a report and um, we'll be creating a report with all the fields like supervisor organization reorganization event everything you know we'll be creating a report we'll be creating a report and we'll be running the report if there are delivered reports you know you can use them if there are no delivered reports we'll be creating a report okay and our, um, all supervisor organization so, uh, do you know anything about uh, reporting concepts like data sources business objects and all yeah, I know that is. Yes. Okay. So we'll be uh, you'll be selecting um, the that particular data source. Let me create. And is there a place where workday data models are uh, basically? Provided even on workday community, are you aware? 
Uh, data models are nothing but a business object. Workday, all the data that stores in Workday is in the form of business object. Okay. Yes. So if you wanted to know all the business objects that are available in Workday, there is a very standard report called um, business object. Business object is the detailed report is standard report that you have, which will give you or if you're not aware of any of the business object that you wanted to look, what you can do is you can just uh, on the search bar data sources. Uh -huh. We'll be getting a standard report that workday reporting concept. You know, if you are not aware of uh, any of the data source that you wanted to create or any of the business object that is holding this data source, if you are not aware, this report will return all the data sources under which um, uh, you know the business object um, that it will be. Th those data sources will be under that business object. You'll be seeing all those business object and data sources available in workday. Okay, you see around two three. 2,379 data sources are available and which you see primary business object will be you know will be holding all these data sources okay okay the reason I ask is supposedly like when I go into a company right workday mm -hmm. is already implemented there mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. every company they implement it based on their use case right yeah so what would yeah. be the best way for me to understand the data models or understand how it is implemented because there is no knowledge transfer. <laughs> no okay. Way. Okay. So I have to figure okay. out on my own how it's implemented. Okay. So uh, the data models, you know, having data under a business object that customer will be doing, but they have to use the business object and the data sources that Workday has provided. They cannot uh -huh. um, create any data source or they cannot create any business object, but they uh -huh. can create fields. They can create reports under this business. Or let's say now I wanted to, uh, you know, track, I wanted to report 1094, you know, about 1095 and 1094, right? Um, where, you know, we'll be sending uh, these forms to government agencies to track US employment uh, things and all. So uh -huh. if I wanted to report on 1094 and 1095, I'll be creating a report uh, under this business object under this data source with the different fields now we know if you if you wanted to know all the reports that are created in your company okay with the different uh, data sources with the different business yeah. object there is a task called all custom reports okay So this is actually a standard report which will return all the reports that are created in your organization and you should be able to view all those reports <clears throat> if you won't give anything it will return all these things but if you wanted to give any report name report owner that you wanted to specifically right. look for you can give if you don't give anything it will return all the reports that are available um, by different persons created with all the report types you can see around oh. 6788 reports are created uh, you can see what are all the report types what uh, data sources that they have used and um, who is the owner of that report and you can also see the underlying field definitions that are uh, configured for this report okay and same thing if i want to and, and i'm no i know i'm going away from the topic but just mm -hmm. in case if I want to know that Workday system has, say, benefits provider, right? It has many integrations. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? How yes. do I know that what are the integrations in place? So basically, you know, um, there is a, we can also create a report for that one. But um, mm -hmm. you, you need to know, uh, generally, you know, for every integration that uh, the integration uh, the resource will be creating is they'll be following a kind of different naming convention for benefit related okay. integrations. OK, mm -hmm. so now um, just to identify the integration that are related to benefits. Or say any any integration, how do I find out what are the integrations in place with my work and friends? Ben. So INTCS is a kind of prefix, you know, that yeah, that will be used to identify the integration that are there in the system. Okay. Uh -huh. So now, if I access this task, you should be able to see all the integrations that are created with this name. Actually, benefit connector, benefit individual rate load, benefit connector. So like that, you know, you should be able to find all the integrations that are created for benefits, uh, you know, vendor or provider with, um, uh, you know, specific to benefits data. Okay. 
Okay. So you should be able to because every integration you know should be followed with standard naming convention. If you are creating for benefits, you'll be giving a uh, benefits. If you are creating anything related to uh, payroll, you'll be giving um, something related to payroll. All those standard yeah. naming convention will be maintained, so you can uh, view all the benefit-related integrations um, with um, the kind of prefix uh, INTC colon benefits. Or um, if you are aware of uh, actually integration name, you can give integration name as well. Okay. But if you don't know if anything, I, if, yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to if I like just type intsys colon, will it return? Because I think the workday since they deployed long back, I don't think they have an int naming convention in place. Okay, so you know, if you wanted to, you know, get that, um, probably you'll be getting a lot of, uh, you know, things that are not related to if you go, oh, if you yeah. access something called INTSYS, there are a lot of integration that will be there. You'll be getting all those integrations. Now, if you don't want it to, you know, uh, go in this way, and if you wanted to know the proper um, integration that are created for each, uh, uh, you know, each module, you can create a report actually. You can create a okay. report, and uh, you know, there is a data source called All Integration System. Uh, you can too, you can take the data source which will provide you all the integrations that are created um, in workday and uh, you can do filters okay uh -huh. you can do filters if you know any of the person uh, you know uh, who are actually uh, uh, which integration is sending to benefit uh, uh, kind of benefit uh, endpoint like uh, uh, blue cross blue shield is there right um, so if you wanted to know the what are the integration that are sending uh, data to blue cross blue shield so you'll be filtering that endpoint should be a kind of blue cross blue shield and um, once you run the report or all the integration that are built sending data to blue cross blue shield will be filtered and it will be returned for you okay that's how you typically play around with this one okay so for example let's say now we know there is a um, 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 integrations that are actually scheduled which are running um, uh, you know automatically based on the schedule now we know benefits integration will also be automated and uh, every day they will be running and mm. uh, if you wanted to know all those integrations you know which are scheduled and which are running actually there's yeah. a task called um, scheduled feature process mm. So this will return all the integration that are scheduled actually. I'll okay. give uh, process as integration. So this will return all the integration that are scheduled. Okay. So that you'll know what are the integrations are scheduled and when they are running, <clears throat> what time they are triggering. That kind of, you know, let's say now we have uh, something called, um, you know, let's take one sample integration, this one. Okay. So now if you go to this integration process, you'll get to know when this is scheduled actually. When this is scheduled, so when this is scheduled and what time this is running, everything you know, you'll be able to get this information, and so that you'll be able to. There are uh, definitely you know there are notifications that will be configured for each integrations, and notifications will be sent to all uh, recipients who are actually intended to get that notification. So that notification says that integration has completed successfully, or integration has failed, integration has completed with warnings. All this kind of you know the notifications that you will be getting based on whenever in a developer is building the integration, they will be configuring a notification to that one. So if you are part of that uh, notification list, you will be getting a notification that this integration has completed successfully. Uh, if it is failed, you will be getting a notification that it, this integration has failed. Kind of things you know you will be getting. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So that is about, and also you have a task called the process monitor. So process monitor is nothing but which allows you to see the status of the integration. <clears throat> if you are aware of uh, any of the integration, 
that is actually running currently and if you wanted to know the status of that integration whether it is completed or failed or anything you can go to process monitor you can see whether uh, this integration has completed the status here you should be able to find the status and um, if it is not um, completed or failed you will see the failure reason not turned into exceptions on future process so this kind of you know status that you will be seeing so the process monitor is a one task you know where you will be able to find the status of this integration let's say now uh, if um, this is um, not completed now, now you see the errors and warning here you'll see what is the error uh, <clears throat> if you're actually monitoring this integration and probably you'll find this error and probably you'll pass on this information to developer hey this integration has failed for some reason and uh, i've identified this is the error and the warnings can you please look into this and fix this one so you'll yeah. be actually informing developers uh, for this reason so that they'll take care of uh, this thing even they'll be getting a kind of notification but in case as a kind of proactive message you know probably you'll be actually looking at this uh, process monitor and uh, see that uh, integration has um, completed or failed you'll get to know that information and you'll be sharing that um, error message and warning message whatever you're seeing will with the relevant team and they'll be taking care of uh, data errors or any kind of fix that has to be done they'll be taking care of that one <clears throat> wow. so that is about um, this thing okay now we were talking something on organizations right <clears throat> so we yeah, are basically uh, it groups actually members um, into a supervisor organization and makes members to be part of that organization hierarchy so now um, <clears throat> once you have the organization and you'll be having people under that organization before you get people to that organization what do you have to do you have to create a position actually so without position uh, based on staffing model if you are actually going with position management staffing model you have to create a position and under that position you have to hire a candidate if you are creating a position there has to be a job profile also created which you are actually asking so job profile job code you are asking right so for create for position there has to be a job profile created so now we'll try to create one sample job profile profile and see how it looks like from when you wanted to have this um, job profile effective we'll create this one more question I have on that, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, we get a request that to create a job profile, but with a backdated effective date. You can create. Okay. You can create. No problem. You can create. Mm -hmm. I've taken backdated only. I've taken 30. I can also take 25. You can create. So that from that date, your job profile, whatever you are creating, will be become effective. <clears throat> So if you wanted to have job code to be included in name, automatically you'll be getting that uh, job code to be populated. So there are certain management levels that we have every organization will be maintaining. So what job level you know that uh, this compensation only should have, you'll be providing that one. I don't think this tenant has any kind of job levels. Okay.
job level you will be having a job grade for every job right you will be mentioning that job level here and <clears throat> before um, if you wanted to have your job profile basically job family group job family and job profile these are actually interlinked okay so all job families job family will be holding a job profile and job family group will be holding job family okay so job <clears throat> job family will be part of job family group and job profile will be part of job family <clears throat> so whenever you um, whenever you are actually reporting uh, if you are actually uh, if you wanted to return all the job profiles under one job family you can uh, get that one or all the job families under job family group if you wanted to report you can do that one so if you are actually creating a job profile it has to be under job family and job family has to be under job family group okay so one example if you <clears> take, <throat> we just created compensation analyst right yes so job yeah. profile can be compensation analyst yes job, job profile family, can be compensation analyst job family will be let's say hr or not or something or related to comp um, comp team comp team <clears throat> and then comp. family group will become hr okay? Yeah. So different, you know, for compensation and HR would be different, but yeah, it depends upon organization. If uh, they wanted to have comp inside job family to be under HR, they can. But if they wanted to maintain any kind of different job family group, so that all uh, everything related to compensation will be under job family group. If you, they wanted to maintain that kind of uh, uh, job profiles and job families, they can create. <clears throat> okay. So is it fair to say that is superset and this is subset? Yeah, so job family will be subset of uh, job family group and job profile will be subset of job family. Okay, got it. So jo here job company job family group would be compensation under a compensation I have a job family called comp insights under job family compensates I have a comp analyst <clears throat> comp specialist mm -hmm. Anything related if you wanted to have any kind of job profile so you can create um, under job insights we can create that so basically job family will be holding all job profiles and uh, job family group will be holding all job families okay got it okay <clears throat> so now here you'll be getting something related to compensation okay if you wanted to have anything um, that to be mentioned uh, any specific compensation grade that this job profile has to be eligible for <clears throat> So for each job profile, there will be a different compensation grade. Grade is nothing but which define ranges of that um, uh, position. Okay, let's say if compensation analyst uh, job profile you are creating, and um, comp grade, uh, you know, if you are creating, the compensation grade should be between <clears throat> 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs. Okay, so when you are actually uh, recruiting uh, any person uh, with this job profile, the compensation should be between 10 lakhs and 20 lakhs. Should not be below 10 lakhs and should not be about 20 lakhs so you'll be uh, mentioning that kind of great profile you'll, you'll be creating those great profiles and you'll be calling those great profiles here for now and i'll just take a um, sample uh, any of the existing great <coughs> <coughs> so i've taken uh, one compensation grade that is specific for this per job profile Okay, so sorry, one uh, follow-up question on that, right? Yeah, yeah. How, how is com com grade and com grade profile related? Um, com grade profile is nothing but you know, where you'll specify um, um, the actual locations you know that has undergo for that uh, grade. Okay, com compensation grade you'll specify the pay range, but if you wanted to restrict that pay range to any of the local uh, you know country let's say okay. for australia this compensation grade has to be eligible and for india this compensation grade has to be eligible all the localizations you'll be making in compensation grade profile okay got it thank so you so whenever you are creating a compensation grade there will be a checkbox called uh, you wanted to enable compensation grade profile this compensation for this compensation grade if you are enabling that checkbox when you get into that compensation grade you'll also see one more tab called compensation grade profile where you can mention all the localizations uh, so all these mm -hmm. things you know, will be creating tomorrow
So in okay. our tomorrow compensation, a regular session, you know, we'll be actually creating grades, great profiles, packages, eligibility rules, plans, everything, you know, we'll be selecting. Um, we'll be creating actually. Yeah, and 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 I mean, I think it will be also just a follow-up. If after every class, if you give me some like assignment, mm -hmm. it, because I have free instant, I like to go and create so that when I do hands-on, then I will. Uh, yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. Since you know today's uh, kind of you know overall uh, things, you know probably today you'll not be seeing any activities, but just you know yeah. kind of uh, um, kind of overview session which covers um, uh, very basic things, you know, before we get on to actual tenant. So tomorrow, you know, we'll um, performing some kind of core configurations related to configure uh, compensation and all. So probably I may ask you, you know, to create compensation grade profile, or okay. uh, I'll be going through a complete flow. So what has to be created first and how eligible rule has to be created i'll be picking up some organizations and uh, we'll be building one kind of compensation package finally we'll be building one compensation package which is which should be eligible for some organization and some team members will be making that one so probably i may ask you a kind of you know similar kind of um, activity okay. to perform okay okay and uh, lastly here you have impacted eligibility rules as empty right yeah so yeah when do you create or define eligibility rules yeah, for this one, you know, since we have not created for this compensation grid and uh, production manager uh, profile, there is no eligibility rule created. That's the reason why it is not showing up. But okay. whenever you are creating um, any kind of compensation grid and uh, compensation grid profile, so there is a option called um, uh, eligibility rule. If you wanted to make um, this compensation grid or compensation uh, grid profile to be restricted to only this organization or to be restricted to people who are from different country who are from specific country if you wanted to give that eligibility criteria for that compensation grade and profile you'll be defining eligibility rule so yeah. saying that this is the compensation grade up should be applicable only for this country or this is the compensation grade should be applicable only for this supervisor organization or this is the compensation grade should be available only for executive leadership team organization so such yeah. kind of you know eligibility criteria that you will be mentioning whenever you're creating grades or grade profiles uh, probably we'll be creating a lot of eligibility rules in our tomorrow session you'll mm -hmm. get to know the what kind of criteria that we are actually maintaining yeah this couple of criteria <clears throat> what i have seen is like like for this particular grade uh, mm -hmm. eligibility rule is that this com grade can get only like bonus yes. between 10, 10 and 15 percent right yeah then you can specify all those percent. things okay yeah okay. So you can specify uh, any specific um, the kind of uh, bonus plan or um, uh, salary plan or alliance plan. If you wanted to restrict only for this organization or this group, you can do that one. Okay. That's how you know uh, we'll actually specify um, the uh, job profile and um, union membership is completely based on organization requirement. If there are any kind of union codes that you wanted to I'll just give it is not allowed because mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of um, unions that are configured in this tenant but yeah so so once I have everything here you'll be providing all the job description um, for where com what compensation analyst will be performing and um, summary details and what are all the rules and responsibilities that compensation analyst will be uh, performing all those things will be you'll be providing here and once you click on this one this job profile can be taken forward with position and you see here job code has generated <clears throat> so you see uh, the compensation analyst with this job code can be tracked whenever you're creating a position or whenever you're actually um, assigning this position to job requisition for hiring purposes you can use this job code and get employee height mm -hmm. okay that's how you know typically see um, this is what you, know, you were asking i uh, wanted to know how job code generates and all so whenever yeah. you create a job code um, job profile automatically job code will be generated <clears throat> since you know we have checked the checkbox as we wanted to have job code to be populated we have checked the checkbox and you can use this job profile in any of the position that you wanted to create let's say if i will go for create position now So there are while you are doing it, there are two staffing models. One is position based, 
Yeah, yes. the other one is job management. Okay, so whenever you wanted to hire an employee under position, whenever you have an organization that you wanted to perform hiring uh, by having a position, you need to go with the position management staffing model. If you're going with position management, there has to be a position available before you hire an employee. Without position, you cannot hire an employee when you are in position management staffing model. Similarly, for job management, <clears throat> there is no position required actually, but certain job restrictions, job hiring restrictions, like if the candidate is meeting roles and responsibilities defined for that position or any kind of skill set, any kind of experience that candidate is meeting, um, you can hire an employee under job management without uh, any position um, in that organization. But this is maintained only for the organization that are that they are, you know, going with very wide job requirements. Most of the organizations, most of the companies, uh, whenever they are building a supervisory organization, they will go with position management because they wanted to have an employee or a candidate hired into the organization through position actually. Uh -huh. So whenever they wanted to go with position, a position management has to be there. Hardly I can say, uh, f uh, you know, 5% five, 5 of customers are actually, you know, going with the job management staffing model without having any positions. If a candidate is meeting um, jobs and responsibility expectations, they'll go with that one. Or else, the most of the customers, 90 to 99 percent of customers, are going with position management staffing model where they wanted to hire an employee through position creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I've created job profile. In order to attach the job profile to the position, I need to create a position. Okay, you cannot create a position <clears throat> without having any kind of uh, job profiles. So you'll be specifying under which organization that you wanted to create a position. So since I have organization that I've already created, I'm choosing that one. But if there is any specific organization related to compensation team, so you can create supervisor organization for compensation team and you can attach the job profile. new position I'll be creating one position and we'll be specifying the job profile that we have created here what is the job profile You'll be seeing that job profile, and you can fill, you know, you can fill all these things. Whether you wanted to have a full time or part time or worker type contract or an employee, you can specify all those things. And if there is any criteria, if uh, if this role, whatever you are hiring, is a critical job, and if it is difficult to hire, just you know to keep a recruiter alert whenever they are going to market to hire this employee. Okay, this is not getting selected. Okay. So you'll be specifying these things so that recruiter will be aware when they're actually looking for an employee um, to do some more uh, research you know, when they're actually hiring an employee. So now when you submit this one, here position will be created. Okay, there are certain mandatory things we have not provided here. I'm giving high data this study. So now I've created a position. So if I go to that particular organization under which I've created this position, you see in the staffing, if you go, there are multiple positions under which you see
compensation specialist will be uh, you know kind of a position to be hired if employee is getting hired under this position uh, with melissa's organization that employee will be part of uh, uh, melissa's organization once uh, employee hiring is completed that employee will be becoming a member of melissa's organization Okay, that's how you know that member will be that um, the hiring once the hiring activity is completed the person will be in the list of members once the hiring is completed but uh, currently the hiring is not completed so that person is under staffing the staffing is nothing but which populates all the future members of the organization okay so for now we you know i've taken one sample uh, you know organization and i've created this one but generally you will create um, or suppose you will assign this uh, job profile uh, to the organization which holds um, something related to compensation all the compensation related members will be under one organization to that organization i should be able to assign this uh, position actually so that whenever you are hiring the position will be considered and uh, hiring activity performs actually okay okay that's how you know we typically play around with um, supervisor organizations create supervisor organization have a position created under that one hire an employee into that position and then you know track um, from there you know your um, employee will be part of uh, supervisor organization and will be a member of a work day hire or organization okay. structure actually okay okay so this is how you know we'll be um, uh, you know typically following a uh, uh, hiring process uh, in core hcm and uh, relate uh, job profile and compensation grade when you're actually uh, hiring any candidate actually okay. <clears throat> so this is a kind of you know high level i can say but tomorrow you know we'll be actually getting into a core regular um, compensation configurations uh, we'll be seeing um, how a job profile job um, sorry comp profile comp grade profile compensation package all these things you know we'll be creating and we'll be seeing how each one is associated to um, the other one and we'll be seeing the compensation flow so what is the flow that has to be maintained we'll be knowing that one in our tomorrow session okay sounds good